This is Kane Pixels, a 17-year-old kid who was hired by A24 to direct a feature film horror movie. He went viral for creating these backrooms, found footage style 3D renders on YouTube. Today I'm going to show you step by step how we can make some similar 3D renders and then use After Effects to create this fake realism by adding in nostalgic visual styles and sounds. Of course, you don't need to recreate horror aesthetics with this tutorial. You can apply what I'm showing here to any sort of video project you're working on to tell the story that you want to tell. So let's get started. So I'm going to start off by downloading a 3D model from Sketchfab. I'll leave the link down below. If you're a beginner, starting with a free downloadable model to tinker with is a great start. There's also tons of simple modeling tutorials out there as well that can help you get up and running, building an environment from scratch. So find your model or create your model, and we're going to import that into Blender. So go to File, Import, and the file I downloaded specifically was an FBX. We still need to make sure our texturing is correct. So if you downloaded your model from the internet and they had the textures included, you can auto apply all of those image maps by going into your shader editor. You want to select the principal shader here and you want to click control shift T. Now that's only going to work if you have node wrangler enabled and node wrangler is a plugin that comes with blender. Just go up to preferences, add ons, search for node wrangler, check that on. Now when you hit control shift T, you can navigate to the folder that contains the textures, select the ones that you want to apply to the object and hit OK. Go ahead and repeat those steps for the other parts of the model until your scene is properly set up and ready to go. But what if you didn't download a model online or what if it didn't contain any of the textures? I recommend you look into procedurally generating the textures yourself. There's tons of tutorials on the internet that can help you with this. Alternatively, there's sites like Quixel Bridge, which has a ton of highly realistic 3D scans. And then there's things like Polyhaven, which are great for HDRIs, textures, and those are all free as well. So now we're going to set up our lighting and I'm going to do a quick little shameless plug here, but this is something that can help you save a ton of time. I have a director 3D plugin for Blender. This is made for music video creators, but there's so many things in there. It can help a bunch of you guys working with Blender. It has templates, it has effects, it has models, it has a lighting studio, lighting presets, and so much more. I have a new update for this rolling out next month. If you're interested, link down below to check that out. If you guys want to add lighting to your scene from scratch, it's pretty easy. First, in the top right, make sure you're in the rendered shading view. That way you're seeing what the scene is going to look like when it's fully rendered out. Obviously, everything's dark, so we need to add some lights. Click Shift A, then navigate to the lighting section and choose the light that we want. I'm going to place some point lights outside of the windows of my scene. With the light selected, you can click this green light bulb tab. And from here, you can change the color of the light and the power of the light. And then I'll also place this eerie red light inside of the bathtub for a cool look. Try to think of things like a cinematographer and craft the scene to your liking. So this is optional, but if you'd like, you can also add in an HDRI environment. This is essentially just a 360 degree image that's wrapped around your scene to provide realistic reflections and additional environmental lighting. To do that, we can just click on this world properties button right here. We can click on this yellow dot next to color. We're going to go over to environment texture and then we need to find a file for this. So I like to use polyhaven.com. They have textures and HDRIs so you guys can find whatever look you're going for. So I'm just going to download one of these here and then back in Blender, I can just click open and then I can load that in. So here is our HDRI. You see we have our strength and the more we increase that, the more it is affecting the lighting on our building here. If you don't want to see the HDRI in the physical background, you guys can go over to your render settings and we can come over to film and we can click on transparent. And while we're here, let's talk about some render settings. So if you guys are going to use EV, I'd recommend checking on ambient occlusion to get some more realistic shadows here. You can check on bloom if you want any sort of glow You can also check on screen space reflections. If you'd like, if you want the most realism, I would go with cycles. I'm going to change this to a GPU compute for tutorial purposes so everything is clear to see. I'm going to keep this on EV for now and we'll switch back over to cycles at the end. The last but not least, we need to set up our camera. We're going to click shift A and scroll down and click add camera. To place the camera at where you're currently looking at in the viewport, click control alt and then numpad zero. Now if you click this camera button, you'll toggle in and out of the camera view. I'm going to go down to the camera properties tab here and I'm going to adjust my focal length to 18 millimeter so that we get this wide angle view. Also, while you're here, you can toggle on depth of field to add some realistic bokeh blur to the background of our image. This in of itself can add a lot of realism to your scenes. Now we need to animate our camera moving through our scene. I'm going to show you a ton of little tips and tricks here so that you don't have to hand animate your camera going through your scene. Click F7 to switch to the overhead view and then change in the top right to wireframe mode. 
We're going to click Shift A again, and we're going to add in a Bezier curve. This curve is going to be the path that our camera will follow throughout the scene. With the curve selected, go ahead and click Tab to switch to Edit Mode. And now we can select this vertex and click E on our keyboard to extrude it. You want to keep extruding to set the path that our camera is going to follow. You can adjust each of those curve points by clicking G on your keyboard. Just think G for grab. That'll allow you to freely move it around. You can also click R to rotate it. That'll allow you to smooth out the curve so that the camera won't make any sharp, unrealistic turns. Now let's connect the camera to the curve path. We're going to select the camera and I'm going to hit Alt plus G. That's going to reset the camera position to the world origin. That way nothing will mess up while we're connecting things together. Next, with that camera still selected, go to the Constraints tab and we're going to add in a Follow Path Constraint. With that added, select from this dropdown our Bezier curve that we already set up and then check on this fixed position box. Now if we change this value, you'll see that the camera is moving along our Bezier curve. You can keyframe this value to control the speed at which it's moving along the path. This gives you custom control in case you need to speed things up or slow things down. You can adjust the speed by moving those keyframes further or closer to each other on the timeline. So now we have the camera moving along the path, but if we go back to the camera view, you'll see that our camera isn't looking at the right angle. So I'm gonna adjust my viewport just to take a look at our camera. I'm gonna click this yellow box object properties tab for the camera, and I'm gonna raise it up a bit on the Z axis. I'm also going to adjust the rotation. Once that's all set up and ready to go, we can click back into the camera view. I'll move along the timeline and I'll just make some simple rotation keyframes so that the camera will rotate as we move through the door. Once you're finished making your keyframes for the camera rotation, you can smooth out the movements by right clicking on these keyframes and selecting Easy Ease. If you want even more control, you can even select those keyframes and switch over to the graph editor. And this will give you way more control over the smoothing of the keyframes and the motion of the camera as a whole. For example, if I take this movement curve and I make this dip more defined, we're going to get this dramatic whip of the camera, which is pretty cool. And while we're in the graph editor, let's go in and add a few more tricks to make this camera movement seem a lot more natural and less robotic. All right, so in our graph editor, you're only seeing the Z rotation, and that's because if you look over at our object properties, that's the only thing that we currently have keyframes. So for now, just so this isn't distracting, go ahead and just hide this, and we're going to keyframe another value. So make sure you're at the start position. We're going to go to the X rotation, and we're going to click I over top of that. You can also click here, set our keyframe. We're going to move to the very end of our composition here and we're going to click I to set another keyframe and then we're just going to select both of those keyframes click V and we're going to change the handle type to a vector so now to add the realistic motion we can go over to the modifiers panel and if you're not seeing that you just need to click N on your keyboard and it should pop up make sure you're clicking on X rotation so here it is we're going to click add modifier and we're going to add noise so first it's going to be super jittery let's just take the scale and just sort of pop that up and then lower the scale as much as you like. Don't crank the values like crazy. You want to keep this under a value of 1. So again, experiment with whatever you like best. I'm going to put the scale to 17 and the strength to 0 0.1. And that gives us this nice sort of blend where it looks like they're actually walking and stepping through the scene. All right, so now you can choose what render you want to use, either EV or Cycles. This is what my Cycles render looks like. Pretty nice. Or again, if you want to save some more speed, you can switch back over to EV. You don't have to go overboard with the render settings here. So in our settings for cycles, you could probably put this down to like 500 to 200. You're going to lose some quality, but the denoiser is pretty nice. So we have one last step here. What you need to do is just render out a still image because we're going to use this for our compositing. So once you have your still image rendered out, we can close here and we can pop over to the compositing tab. And let's check on use nodes so that we can see this. And then let's click Shift A and add in a viewer node. And you can shift and hold down right click and just draw this little connector like this. And we can have this little connector socket and place that in our viewer. So now we can see what we're actually doing with these compositing nodes. So the only thing I'm going to change here, I'm going to pop over to, to the view layer properties and I'm going to check on a mist pass. So let's again render the image. And this time when it renders out, it'll render out with that mist pass as well. All right, so that's finished. We can close this. Now what we can do is click Shift A and we can search for a mix node. So we can connect the mist to the factor and then instead of plugging our image into here we can plug it we can plug it into the first image part of the mix and then connect it back like that now you'll see everything is connected together we can control the mist just by adding in a math node and then we'll change that to multiply and then you guys can mess around with these values to control how much mist 
you want in your scene. So that's about it. Let's go ahead and set this up for After Effects where we're going to do a lot of the magic that I've been talking about. So we'll go over to our output properties. We just need to create under output a folder for where we're going to save this. So I'll right click and create a new folder. Make sure you have your frame range set up. This is good for me. Another important thing here, your frame rate, because we're going to be faking VHS or old style film footage, you don't want to go with 30. It's a little bit too smooth. So I'd recommend keeping it 24 or under. And then let's render this out. So now in After Effects, we're going to talk about how to create our VHS filters and our old style film filters. There's tons of tutorials on the internet showing you guys how to do this. 99% of them are just throwing an overlay over top or using a plugin and calling it a day. I'm going to show you how to add some specific things that give you control over the image and are going to give you a more realistic look. And then at the end, if you want, you can sprinkle on the plugin, you can sprinkle on the overlay and that'll add a bit more detail. All right, guys. So here we are within After Effects. The first thing we're going to do is bring in our Blender animation. So we're going to go to our project bin in the top left. We're going to right click and we're going to go to import multiple files. So here's mine house render. I also did another one with motion blur. We can click the first frame here, import as footage. We'll click import and then we'll click done. So here is our video that we rendered. Now, the first thing that we should do is fix the frame rate. After Effects will always import an image sequence at 30 frames per second. So we can right click here, go to interpret footage main. And then under frame rate here, we want to set this to whatever you set it in Blender. So I set mine to 24 frames per second. You also want to make sure your composition under composition settings is set to 24 frames per second or again, whatever frame rate you rendered it out, just so everything is matching up. So to start off, if you'd like to go into a four by three aspect ratio, go up to composition, comp settings, and just change your width to 1440 by 1080. Next, we're going to blur some of these details out. So with 3D softwares, you're going to get nice sharp edges and a bit too much clarity than you would have in normal real life footage. So we can look up a fast box blur. We're going to put the blur radius to one and we're going to change the iterations to eight. And now you can see a before and after. You can also look up an unsharpened mask to sharpen some of those edges after we blur it out. So I'm going to go 100 for the amount, 10 for the radius, and then zero for the threshold. So that should bring back some of that detail that's lost with the blur. And if you still need any more details, you can look up the sharpen effect and you can play around with that. Now we can add some chromatic aberration. If you want to do this in a fast way, you can add in a channel blur and just go over to the blue blurriness or whatever color you like. And if you crank that up, you can start to see some of this blue hue around the edges here. So now we can add some interlacing. And to do that, we're going to add in the Venetian blinds effect. So let's select this. We'll click control D to duplicate it. We'll add in Venetian blinds and for transition complete, we're going to go 50 direction. We're going to go 90 and then the width we're going to go four. So I'm going to disable all the other effects in the effect controls here. So I'll name this VHS filter only Venetian blinds. I'm going to hide the visibility of the bottom layer and you can see what I'm talking about here where it looks like we have these scan lines. Let's turn the bottom back on and then you can change the blending mode of the top layer to either lighten screen or add just to blend the two together. We're going to right click on that VHS filter layer. We're going to go to pre compose and we'll name this interlacing. Let's double click into the interlacing layer and we're going to go up to composition, composition settings. And we're going to change the frame rate here to something like 60. Now what we can do is we can click this toggle switches and modes button and we can enable frame blending. So this switch right here. And that'll add this sort of ghosting effect every couple frames, which should help with our interlacing. And then if we go back to our main comp, you'll see we have that ghosting effect with the Venetian blinds that we set up earlier. And we can even add to that by just taking this layer and moving it back one frame. And now we'll get that sort of ghosting interlacing look on the footage. And I bumped this up to full quality just to see, get those nice jagged edges like you see in authentic VHS. So that's nice. We'll put that back to half. Now we can mess around with some of the color. So we're going to go back to our original footage here. Let's look for the Lumetri color effect under color correction. Or if you want, you could even right click, add this in as an adjustment layer. And we'll name this color, place that on there. So under Lumetri color, we're going to first open up creative. We're going to go down to vibrance and we're going to lower that a bit. Next, we're going to add some flickering to the color by messing with the color temperature. So we're going to come up to the temperature under basic correction. And we're just going to hold down alt and click on the stopwatch here. 
and that should open up this expression for the temperature of the effect. We're just gonna add in a wiggle here. So we're gonna type in wiggle, parenthesis three comma 20. We can also add in grain. So we'll look up add grain, put this in here. And now if we go back to our project, we make a new composition and this time it's going to be 1920 by 1080. We can name this final comp VHS. And then we'll come back in here. This is our main comp. I'll rename this to VHS four by three. Let's go to our final comp, we'll drag in the VHS comp. And now you'll see we have those edges. There's a ton of extra things you can do to add onto this. Adding blur, adding sharpen, and some of these other little tips and tricks are the main selling points of this. I'm gonna link below the tutorial I learned these steps from. You can also apply different overlays or plugins to add onto this. I really like the Universe VHS plugin. Talked about this one a bunch. Gives you all the distortion along the edges, gives you different presets for tape styles, things like that, standard, clean, saturation, boosted. So yeah, if you want some really nice filters over top, you can do that. All right, so I showed you how to do the VHS method. Now let me show you how to create some vintage film style filters. So we're gonna start off by creating a new composition here and we'll make this 1920 by 1080. Or alternatively, you can create any aspect ratio you want. It's up to you. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is color correct this. So let's look up curves. We're gonna apply this here. What I'm gonna do is grab this bottom part and just wash out the darks. Then I'm gonna lower the highlights. And to make sure that we don't dip this too much, we can just create a little point here and then create this sort of S curve like this. You can also add in Lumetri color, do the same thing we did before. You can either go to creative and reduce the saturation or you can reduce the vibrance. So I'm gonna reduce the vibrance. And again, like the VHS, we don't want everything to be so sharp and modern looking. So we can add in our fast box blur. And again, for blur radius, I like putting that at one. Iterations, we can go eight. Then we put in our unsharpened mask. Put this at 100, put this at eight. And then I'm gonna put the sharpened amount up to 100, just to add a bit more details than our VHS. So now we're gonna add the jitter of the film, and we can do that by clicking P on our keyboard to show position. We're gonna right click on position, and we're gonna separate the dimensions. And then we're gonna hold down Alt on our keyboard, and we're gonna click the stopwatch next to Y position. And that'll add an expression here. And for that expression, we're gonna create a wiggle. So we'll go wiggle, parenthesis 24 comma six. You guys will notice that we're doing this with a lot of different values just to add jittering and things like that, or to add a lot of the distortion that you see in VHS or film. We're gonna do the same with exposure. So search for exposure, drop that on here. We're gonna alt click exposure, and then we're gonna do another wiggle. 24 comma five. And if you guys want, you can reduce the flicker if this is a bit too intense for you. Let's change this to black and white so we can add in the tint effect. And I'm just stacking these all on the layer. It's really up to you guys. If you wanna organize them um, or apply these to all different layers in the composition, you guys can use adjustment layers. It's all personal preference in my opinion, but either way, let's add tint. And that'll give us the black and white by default. You can also add in some grain. We wanna make sure that there's no color in the grain here because we're not going VHS, we're going just film stock. So let's go to color and check on monochromatic. And then you guys can play around with the size and the intensity, of course. And then I'll drop down the intensity and then we'll put that from preview to final output. And then we can add a vignette. I'm gonna use CC vignette. Let's take the amount, so just crank that up. Then you can play with the frame rate as well using posterized time. Drag that on there. You can crank this down something like 18. And then to finish this off, we can add in some overlays. And again, I mentioned these will be on my website, your snow and old film overlay, fit it to your comp, and then you can change the blending mode to get rid of that black screen. And now you can see some of the snow, some of the dust. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. One of my main missions on this channel has been to bridge the gap between the 3D world and the editing world. And I think that videos like this are a great example of what you can do as an editor or as a 3D artist by learning the other side, building your skill sets. 3D allows you to bring anything that's in your head to life. And then After Effects allows you to fully control that image and get all the details down. If you guys did enjoy, slap a like on the video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more videos like this and to stay up to date. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,